Hello grade 10 students. In this video we're going to talk about the nervous system part 3. So this graph represents the membrane potential or the action potential in nerve fiber with the different phases phase 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 and 7. These are the different phases of an action potential where 1 represents the resting potential where no stimulus is applied number two represent the artifact which is called the hypopolarization we said that polarization is negativity hypo decrease so hypopolarization it's decrease in the negativity phase number three represent the depolarization we're going to move to the positive and Number four, which is this region, number four, it represents the inversion of polarity, moving from the positive down to the negative. And then we have phase number five, repolarization, where negativity is retained back. Phase six represents the hyperpolarization. Hyper means that high, it's like we say hyperactive. So hyper polarization, it's increase in the polarity, meaning that increase in the negativity and phase number seven, which is returning back to the resting potential. So as a revision, this represent the phases of an action potential where phase number one represent the resting potential minus 70 millivolt where no stimulus is applied. Phase two, it represents the hypopolarization decrease in the negativity as well it's called artifact phase number three represent moving to the positivity depolarization moving from minus 70 to about plus 50 it's called depolarization number four it's the inversion of polarity moving from the positive toward the negative and phase five it represents the repolarization going back to the negative phase six hyper polarization increase in the negativity and phase number seven it represent the returning to the resting state so these are the different phases as i said number one it's the resting potential where no stimulus is applied where number two it's hypopolarization which is called the artifact Number three, depolarization. Number four, the inversion of polarity. Number five, repolarization going back to the negative. Number six, hyperpolarization increase in the negativity in a higher value than the one recorded in the resting potential, which is minus 70. And number seven, it's returning back to the resting state. Let's now talk about the phases of the action potential at the level of the electric understanding. So depolarization, as we said, depolarization, we're going to move to the positive. It corresponds to the hypopolarization. Hypo, it's less. Polarization, negativity, as we said before. So hypopolarization, it's decreased in the negativity. It was minus 70. It moves to the about 120. It moved to the 50. So minus 70 plus 50, it's 120 millivolt. This means that the interior becomes more positively charged with respect to the exterior which become more negatively that's why we have the polarization now let's move to the repolarization repolarization is going back to the negative it corresponds to the return back to the initial state where the potential difference decreases or it drops from 50 to minus 70 millivolt this is the phase number five in the graph of the phases of the action potential so this means that the nerve fiber is negatively charged interior it's more negatively charged in the interior with respect to the exterior which becomes more positively charged now we're going to talk about the hyper hyper polarization hyper meaning increase Polarization increase in the negativity. So this corresponds to the increase in the electronegativity of the interior. 
of the nerve fiber where delta V drops or decreases to less than minus 75 millivolt approximately so this means that the interior is now more electronegative compared to the resting state which is about minus 70 millivolt we're going to talk about the ionic charges first we talk about the uh, understanding about the electric understanding at the level of depolarization phase number three repolarization phase number five and the hyperpolarization which is phase number six now we're going to talk about the ionic changes the differences at the level of the ions first of all let's start with the resting phase resting state it corresponds to the delta v is equal to minus 70 millivolt so in this state the cell membrane is highly permeable to k plus so more k plus on the inside and more na plus will be on the outside this happens in the resting phase so you have to know that more k plus will be on the inside and more na plus will be on the outside why because the membrane is highly permeable to k plus than that of the na plus number three the depolarization depolarization meaning i'm moving toward the positive so the membrane permeability to na plus will increase so more na plus channels will open so more gates for na to enter and the permeability to the k plus decreases k channels or k gates potassium gates will close so more positive charges will accumulate on the interior of the fiber as such it becomes more electro positive so here depolarization we repeat it the membrane to an permeability to na plus will increase and more na plus channels will open and permeability to k plus will decrease k plus channels will close so more positive charges accumulate on the interior of the fiber as such it becomes more electro positive okay this is the let's move down to the repolarization phase repolarization phase as i said the membrane permeability to na plus decreases so the na plus channels what would happen for them they will close and permeability to k plus will increase as such k plus channels will open so more positive charges accumulate on the outside of the nerve fiber so the interior becomes more electronegative that's why we move back to the polarity in the phase you have to know that sodium ion channels they close and depolarization triggers the opening of voltage gated potassium ion channels and then the k plus will rush out of the cell repolarizing and then hyperpolarizing membrane you have to know that the hyperpolarization hyper increase polarization negativity so the increase in the negativity the k plus channels they are still open so they are too slow to close so more positive charges will accumulate on the outside of the fiber as compared to the resting one so the interior becomes more electronegative even more electronegative than the resting state which is minus 70 millivolt okay so hyperpolarization the k plus channels they are still close still open sorry they are too slow to close so more positive charge accumulate on the outside of the fiber as compared to the resting so the interior becomes more electronegative and even it's more electronegative than the one in the resting state so in the hyperpolarization since the k channels are still open so more positive charges will accumulate on the outside so more electronegative will be the interior of the nerve fiber and that's why the negativity will be more than that in the case of the resting state so this is the uh, interpretation at the level of the ions for the hyperpolarization okay let's move now 
talk about the directional potential, how it's resume. Resuming the action potential, the potassium channels, they will close and repolarization will reset the sodium ion channels. The ion diffuses away from the area and the sodium potassium transporters maintain polarization. These notes, you don't have to study them just for general information. Okay. So sodium potassium transporters, they maintain polarization and the membrane is now ready to fire again and to start again in new action potential. This figures represent the return to the resting state polarization. Then the Na plus channels they open and the K plus channels they are closed in step number two. Threshold potential is reached and actual potential is triggered. Phase number three and Na plus channels they close and inactivate while the K plus channels they open and K plus brushes outside and phase number four k plus channels closes relatively slow causing in a brief undershot and they go back to the hyper polarization and then we go back to returning to the resting state you have to know that the low of the nerve fiber the nerve fiber obeys the low of all or none what the meaning of this and pay attention to this note this is a very important note if we have a weak stimulus it's below the threshold value needed to trigger an impulse so there is no action potential so this shows that whenever we have a response or a stimulus which is weak below the threshold value below the value needed to trigger an action potential so there is no action potential while we have a stimulus just above the threshold so this value is above the threshold so this one is said to be effective one so this will cause depolarization of the membrane and then we have an action potential so this one is called the threshold of excitation is the first one to cause an action potential while the weak stimulus is said to be the ineffective stimulation why because it doesn't cause the appearance of the action potential so pay attention to this and be careful that the weak stimulus it co it's called that doesn't cause the appearance of an action potential it's called the ineffective stimulation it doesn't cause the appearance of the action potential while the first stimulus to cause the appearance of the action potential is said to be the threshold of excitation whereas the strongest stimulus they are said to be effective stimulation let's see here we start threshold one and a stronger stimulus if you see here all of them they have the same frequency as the one here so first of all you have to know that the nerve fiber obeys the law of all or none either we have an action potential or not this is first second frequency it's approximately the same frequency no it's the same amplitude so amplitude meaning that the value is the same value but it differs in the frequency okay how many times it repeats itself so you have to know that the amplitude is approximately constant while the one that differs is the frequency so when the nerve zone of a nerve fiber is excited efficiently depolarization occurs and then action potential is created this depolarization stimulates the depolarization of the neighboring zone ahead this is because the previous zone is said to be a refractive mean period or it's not excitable as such the message propagates forward and never backward so it moves in only unidirectional manner so you have to know this important note that the nervous message propagates in a unidirectional manner meaning that from dendrite to the cell body to the axon to the next cell dendrite cell body axon and to the next cell and so on and it never moves backward so it moves in a unidirectional manner so pay attention to this nervous message it moves or it propagates in a unidirectional manner 
the saltatory conduction, the jumping of an impulse between the nodes of Ranvier in a myelinated, myelinated axon, so this will dramatically increase the speed. So it only occurs in axon having myelin, it increases the speed from 2 meter per second to about 120 meter per second, so it's about 60 times higher or faster. Factors that affect the speed of propagation of the message in a nerve fiber, we said we have the diameter, we said we have the myelination, and we have temperature T1, T2, nerve fiber 1, temperature is T120 degrees Celsius, and in nerve fiber 2, it's T equal 30 degrees Celsius, so the T1 is less than T2, so the V1 will be less than V2. So we can conclude here that the as the temperature of the nerve fiber increases, the speed of propagation of the nervous message will increase as well. Factors that affect the speed of propagation of a nervous message in a nerve fiber, we have drugs. Drugs, they are divided into two types, either stimulants or tranquilizers. Stimulants, they accelerate the nervous message like for example the coffee some of you for example your mom your dad they said that they didn't wake up exactly or 100 percent unless you drink coffee so coffee it's contain it contains caffeine so this is a type of stimulants that accelerate the nervous message meaning that it make it faster while tranquilizers they decelerate the nervous message they make make they make it slower like sleeping pills for example okay so here we have the figure we are going to talk here in specific about the dorsal root and about the ventral root dorsal root containing the efferent ventral efferent so efferent it's motor afferent it's sensory the pathway of the nervous message through spinal nerve we have this experiment this experiment is a very very important experiment in grade 10 biology and in the nervous system this is one of the most important experiments excitation of the ventral root of a spinal nerve what will happen excitation of the dorsal root excitation of the central end excitation of the peripheral end after the sectioning of the ventral root and so on so excitation of the ventral root of the spinal nerve we have contraction while excitation of the dorsal root we have contraction with the feeling of pain so let's interpret these results first after excitation of the ventral root of the spinal nerve we have the concerned part contracts this indicates that the nervous message propagates from the ventral root toward the muscle which is the concerned part so this one it has a motor function while after we did the excitation of the dorsal root of the spinal nerve we have contraction with a feeling of pain so this indicates that the nervous message propagates from the dorsal root toward the spinal cord and from spinal cord to the brain and then to the concerned part so it moves from the spinal cord to the brain and then to the part so it has an efferent way so it has a sensory function so till now we deduce that the ventral root it has a motor function whereas the dorsal root it has a sensory motor since we have contraction of the concerned part so the nervous message was propagated from the ventral toward the muscle so it has a motor function whereas the dorsal root after its excitation it contracts and the animal feels pain so this indicates that the nervous message was propagated from the dorsal root to the spinal cord and then from the spinal cord toward the brain and then toward the concerned part so the dorsal has a sensory function experiment three what did they do after the sectioning of the ventral root and exciting the central end there is no reaction so here we can deduce that the nervous message stopped at this section it doesn't move while excitation of the peripheral end 
after the suctioning of the ventral root, the muscle contract. So here, the nervous muscles move toward the muscle. So it propagates in a centrifugal manner in the motor. It's away from the center. Whereas, after the suctioning of the dorsal root and excitation of the central end, we have contraction and the feeling of pain. So this means that the nervous muscle propagated to the spinal cord and then to the brain and then to the concerned organ or muscle. So after the sectioning of the peripheral end, sorry, after the sectioning of the dorsal root and excitation of the peripheral end, there is no reaction. So the muscle stopped at this section. So in the dorsal root, the nervous muscle propagates in a centripetal toward the central nervous system, brain and spinal cord spinal cord and brain and then to the muscle or to the effector organ so you have to know that the nervous muscles propagate in a centripetal direction or manner in the sensory dorsal root while it moves in a centrifugal manner in the motor ventral root while the last experiment of the destruction of the spinal cord spinal nerve there is no reaction and we have total loss of motor activity and sensation so this means that the spinal nerve has both function it has motor and sensory so this is the interpretation so after excitation of the ventral root of the spinal cord the concerned part contracted so this indicates that the nervous muscle was propagated from the ventral toward the concerned part which is the muscle so the ventral has a motor function this is the first one. Second experiment. After excitation of the dorsal root of the spinal cord, the concerned part contracts and the animal feels pain. This indicates that the nervous muscles were propagated from the dorsal root toward the spinal cord, from it to the brain and then to the muscle. Therefore, dorsal root it has a sensory function. So dorsal, sensory, ventral, it has a motor. Then Third experiment, after sectioning of the ventral root and excitation of the central end, there is no reaction. So the nervous muscles was stopped at this section. Whereas, after sectioning the ventral root and exciting the peripheral end, the muscle contracted. So the nervous muscles propagated toward the muscle. This indicates that the nervous muscles propagate in a centrifugal manner in the motor ventral root. So you have to know that the nervous message propagates in the centrifugal manner in the motor ventral root. By the way, these highlighted one, you can study them. Okay, cool. This experiment is constant and you can study these highlighted one as a conclusions. For example, you have to know that in the uh, nervous message in the motor ventral root, it propagates in a centrifugal manner. Fourth experiment. After sectioning the dorsal root and exciting the central end, contraction occurred and a feeling of pain was recorded. This indicates that the nervous muscles propagated to the spinal cord, to the brain, and then to the muscle. While after sectioning the dorsal root and exciting the peripheral end, no reaction occurred. This indicates that the muscle was stopped at this region or at this section. So therefore, the nervous muscles propagate in a centripetal manner, meaning that toward the center, toward the brain, and the spinal cord or the spinal cord and the brain well, the last experiment of the destruction of the spinal nerve there is there was no reaction and total loss of sensation and feeling of pain and the motor activity so this indicates that the spinal cord has a mixed function motor and sensory okay